Now in this video we're going to be making hydroponic fertilizer medium for growing plants in hydroponics and there's only three components to this. There's the NPK fertilizer, nitrogen phosphate potassium fertilizer and choose one with micronutrients. So this is an English version in the States you get master blend. It doesn't matter too much as long as it's an NPK fertilizer with the trace nutrients. So for example, this one's got the trace nutrients of boron, copper, iron, magnesium, molybdenum, and zinc. Now, when plants are growing in soil, they get quite a lot of calcium from the soil. But when you grow in hydroponics, you need extra calcium. And that's where this component comes in, calcium nitrate provides extra nitrate but it also provides calcium which is absolutely vital for plant growth. Now this is the um, calcium nitrate that I've got a link for at the bottom of the uh, video and it's taken from the international standard Yara Livre Calcinate calcium nitrate. So I, I buy this in sacks but you can buy one kilogram at a time from me using the link below. So that's the second component. The third component uh, is magnesium sulfate, simple Epsom salts. Now the ratio that we use is one of the NPK fertilizer, one unit, doesn't matter what the unit is, one unit of the calcium nitrate and half a unit of the magsulf. So if you're using a cup full, it'd be one cup full of that, one cup full of that and half a cup full of that. Now what I do is I make up a stock medium that we will dilute 250 times. In other words, if I make up one litre of this stock medium, that will make 250 litres of the final nutrient solution. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So what I have here are my components and I've got a glass and I put A on it because I'm going to make up solution A and into this glass just for the purposes of this demonstration 100 mils of water obviously if you want more you could make up a litre 10 litres 100 litres you just multiply up your uh, the uh, materials you're putting in it so that's 100 mils of water in there now to 100 mils of water I'm going to add 15 mils of the NPK fertilizer this is just an ordinary baking spoon. In fact, when you buy these fertilizers, you often get these handy measuring things with it. Now, when you look at these uh, recipes on the internet, they tend to be in grams, but of course, most of us don't have accurate scales that are gonna measure 15 grams. But I found out that this works perfectly well. I'm going to use 15 mils of the fertilizer. So I'm taking my NPK fertilizer with trace nutrients, and I'm giving myself one even spoon of it like that. So that is 15 mils in there. And that 15 mils is going to go into solution A. Stir that up a bit. Remember, this is the stock solution. This will be diluted one volume of this to 250 volumes of water. So just stir that up a bit. And remember the ratios, it's one NPK, one calcium nitrate, 0.5 of the Epsom salts, the magnesium sulfate. So half of 15, of course. If you put warm water in this, it helps it to dissolve a bit. You can actually buy ready-made up um, solutions, stock solutions, but I think it's better and more economical to make up your own. And with more expertise, you can also adjust the formula a little bit for particular types of plants, whether you're growing tomatoes or cucumbers. Just give it slightly different formulas. But this is a standard one that works pretty well for, for most plants to begin with. So that was, remember that was uh, 15 mils. So the Epsom salt is going to be half of that, 7.5 mils. The NPK fertilizer and the Epsom salt is readily available. So just an even 7.5 mil spoonful here. 
and that's also going to go into solution A. Now the reason that we're uh, mixing this up into two solutions is that the calcium can precipitate at higher concentrations with the MagSulf and the NPK fertilizer. So that's my A solution made up. And what I tend to do is make up larger volumes and put it in a bottle, so I'll have an A bottle and a, and a B bottle. Of course you could do litre bottles, you could do 10 litre bottles, whatever scale of production that you're uh, using in your hydroponics. So that's actually fairly, I can feel that's fairly well dissolved now because we used uh, warm water, tepid water anyway. So that's my A solution. Next, I want my B solution. So my B solution, here we are, got 100 mils in there already. And the B solution is going to be 15 mils of the calcium, the calcium nitrate. And there I've got a 15 mil spoonful that goes into there. Mix that up. The, uh, the calcinate actually um, dissolves fairly readily. It's designed to be water soluble. This is the one that's harder to obtain actually. That's why I bought the, uh, the sacks in to sell it on in one kilogram uh, bags from the link at the bottom of this video. So that, that's nearly dissolved already actually. That's, that's good. So remember this is a 250, 1 to 250 stock solution. So for my uh, stock solutions A and B, to make up a 1 to 250, so that's one of this to 250 uh, times the same volume, 250 times the volume of water. So it's uh, 15 mils of the NPK fertilizer. No, sorry, that's 15 mils of the calcium nitrate in 100 mils. That's my B solution. And 15 mils of the NPK fertilizer with 7.5 mils of the, um, the Epsom salts, the magnesium sulfate in 100 mils. So that's what I've got uh, mixed up already. So there I have my stock solutions. And you, th these all last for years. I mean, they're, they're stable chemicals. So you can, you know, you might just make up a litre of this or 10 litres of this or 100 litres of this or whatever you need once, once a year. This is, you don't need to do this very often. And it's pretty obvious which is which from the colour. Now, the next bit I want to do is I want to dilute this 250 times. Now, obviously, you'd normally use uh, larger volumes, but uh, what I'm going to do is I've got a litre of water here. You can use tap water. If you're using tap water, best to let it stand for a little while to let some of the chlorine evaporate off. Or you can use rainwater. I like to use rainwater. I also find the pH is a little bit lower on the rainwater as well, which is, uh, is often quite useful. Now, what I'm doing now is I've got these stirred up. Now, if I was to mix my A and B solutions now in concentrated form, it would get some precipitation, so we don't want that. But when we're diluted in uh, this whole litre of water, it's not a problem. Now, it's 1 to 250. So, 1 mil would give me, I would dilute in 250 mils. 2 mils, I would dilute in 500 mils. 3 mils, I'd dilute in 750 mils. So, to put this into a litre, I'm going to add 4 mils. And um, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to do it with a, with a syringe. So hopefully you can see there, we've got four mils. Four mils going into one litre. There we go, four mils in one litre of solution A with the NPK fertilizer and the uh, Epsom salts. And now also four mils of B, calcium nitrate, and you can see I've got four mils there. And that gives us one to 250.
And I'm going to squirt that in there as well. Give that a stir up. And that is it. That is my hydroponic solution here. And I have found this gives good plant growth to a large variety of different plants. That's it. Very simple. Once you've made up your stock solutions. So in this case, to make up my final solution, this is my final solution here. I've added four mils plus four mils. So four mils of A, four mils of B in one litre of water to make up my final solution for the purposes of this demonstration. Of course, normally you'd be using larger amounts, so it could be 40 mils and 40 mils in 10 litres, or 400 mils and 400 mils in, in 100 litres, depending on the, the amount of hydroponic fertiliser that you would uh, like to use. So this could just be a small scale system or larger scale system, whatever you're using. Now, if you just follow those instructions, I can tell you that that medium is good for plant growth. That's fine. But what I'm going to do is just give you some proof of that. And th the reason I've given you these instructions is so you don't have to buy these meters. Um, but this is my uh, TDS EC meter. TDS is total dissolved salts, EC is electrical conductivity measured in micro siemens, siemens being the unit of electrical conductivity. So let's just put it in and see what we've got. Let's turn it on first. Yeah. Now can you see there I've got 1898 in this solution. That's 1898 micro siemens per centimeter. The units don't matter too much but we can see we've got following those instructions we've got 18 basically 1900. You don't need to do this you can if you want to, of course, but you don't need to if you follow the instructions, just to make it simple. Now let me tell you why this is important, why we need to use the concentrations as I've described them. And that's on this chart here. Because young growing plants like 600 to 800 parts per million and that is equal to 1200 to 1600 millisiemens micro siemens sorry so you can see we were on about 1800 1900 and um yeah that, that that that's for young growing plants now now to germinate you want you want something a bit more uh, a bit more dilute than that but for flowering plants for more mature plants, what we want is 800 to 1200 parts per million, and that's 1600 to 2400 micro siemens, which is equal to 1.6 to 2.4 millisiemens. So you can see that we're nicely in that range with the dilutions that I've used. Now, if you're germinating seeds, you'd want something a little more dilute. For more very mature plants, you'd want something maybe a little stronger getting on for um, 2,000, 2,400. So the units are a bit confusing. This is parts per million. That's equal to that many um, micro siemens and that's equal to that many millisiemens. But it shows that it gives us the concentrations that are good for growing plants. And it's also good to check the uh, pH. Um, now ideally we want the pH to be 5.5 uh, to 6.5. Commercial growers will use um, 5.8 to 6 as their pH. But of course we can put the pH up and down a bit. Now this is actually tap water. 
and can we see there that the pH is 6.3 something like that so what we actually want for healthy growing plants is 5.5 to 6.5 so here we've got 6.26, so that, that would be acceptable. Commercial growers will use 5.8 to 6. They'll try and get a more specific pH. So perhaps that could do with being slightly more acidic. So we could add a dilute acid to bring that down a bit to optimize the pH. And the pH is important because it is the pH that determines the efficiency with which the roots are able to take in nutrients and if you're still interested we can turn on this meter again this is the um, EC meter and we notice that's interesting yeah we notice we're on about 2000 2000 uh, micro siemens there which is two milli siemens so this solution would be quite good for uh, reasonably mature plants and actually with this machine you can change mode and we can get that in uh, in parts per million as well rather than take my word for it so you can see there that that is equivalent to just over a thousand parts per million Again, which would be uh, su suitable for more mature plants. Yeah, I'll try that. Okay. 